is Stacy Robinson. I'm an RN and Health and Wellness Director at Brigill Colonial Heights. I would like to welcome you out today for this presentation on um, fall risk and safety management in that process. So glad to have you and if you have any questions feel free to get in touch with the senior sitter and we'd we'll be happy to answer those as much as we can. All right. So today we'll talk about risk factors safety risk and prevention, exercise to help strengthen and improve balance, interventions that can increase safety and reduce your risk of fall, what to do in the event that you do fall, and how to prevent them. Um, you may or may not know, but it's not a normal part of aging process, um, yet 25% of 65 and older fall each year. Um, the most common injury resulting in these falls are head injuries. Um, and so we would just like to take the, um, the approach of reducing those risks for falling. Um, falls are something that can lead to a loss of independence and I know um, as the aging process occurs that's something that we don't want to do anyway is lose our independence, um, but falls can lead to that. Um, also broken bones, fractures, traumatic brain injuries or head injuries, um, need for supervision or caregivers which will then lead to an increased financial burden. And I know those are all things that you all think about in your day-to-day -day living. Um, some risk factors that we have, lower body weakness, those that you've worked hard all your life and depending on what your career path was, you may have low back um, weakness with muscle weakness and things like that, which also interferes with balance and your mobility. Um, difficulty walking in balance, um, anytime you're going up and down stairs, depending on the, the grade of um, how those stairs go, can also be a difficult process with balance. Um, risk factors also include different medications that you take, and it may be those that are prescribed by your physician, or it may be things you take over the counter, vitamins and supplements and so on. Um, other risk factors that we see are visual problems. Um, do you have cataracts, glaucoma, uh, macular de degeneration, things like that? Are those, are those diagnoses that you have that interfere from your um, perception of the things that are surrounding you? And I would tell you that um, eye exams, routine eye exams are very important. Foot pain or poor footwear. Um, Foot pain, um, those of you that might be a diabetic and you suffer from um, neuropathy um, or anything like that, plantar fasciitis, um, anything in those um, diagnoses will also interfere with your foot pain and wearing a comfortable shoe that gives your feet support um, are also other factors. Being careful to wearing sandals or things with straps. Home hazard, this is a big one. Um, we love, as women typically, we all love these pretty rugs and um, things like that, but they can be one of the biggest um, risk factors that we have. Um, so making sure that we declutter our homes with rugs, cords, and um, things like that so it'll avoid um, a tripping hazard. Safety risk and prevention. Um, ensuring good lighting, um, as, as we age our um, the, the things that we sense as far as our lighting goes um, can change. Um, contrast furniture, so if we have a brown couch, we may have a red blanket or our flooring color should differ from what our furniture is, just to give that offset. Um, decrease the glare from natural light. I still allow a natural light in, but decrease um, the glare from that and mini blinds um, or things like that. Curtains will also, shears will also help with that. Using night lights, um, they recommend amber colored lights that work a little bit better and will decle decrease the glare at night. Uh, using a flashlight or having one handy if you're needing to get up during the night um, to go to the restroom or something like that, that will assist with that as well as sensor lights. Um, some of the safety risks we were talking about, about decluttering, um, making sure your pathway is clear. So, if you're in the living room watching um, TV in the evening, making sure from there to the, um, the restroom or there to your kitchen, um, the room is clear so you can walk um, in a good path as well as if you need to maneuver around. Um, on your stairs, make sure that they are decluttered. Um, 
sometimes we put things on the stairs that we need to take upstairs at some point, but those can also be um, risk factors that we need to be careful with. Um, throw rugs. If you do choose to have a throw rug, throw rug, make sure it's secured and you can get those things at your local um, stores and they are things that can secure on the bottom of your rugs just so they'll um, stay clear on the floor. Um, cords, shoes, and plants. Um, cords by far, sometimes we use those outlet um, protectors and so they'll have multi areas that you can plug things in and they can also be a risk because you have so many um, cords around. Shoes, maybe when we sit down in our recliner we take our shoes off to the side and when we stand up we have that tripping hazard. As well as plants, if you have those plants in your home that have big leaves and things or that are out um, in the pathway of walking by, that can also be a, a um, tripping hazard. Um, this is something that's very good as far as if you are struggling to get from a sitting to standing position. It's called the 90-90-90 and that's where that your ankles, knees, and hips are all at a 90 degree angle as you can see in the third picture there. This puts you at an increased risk of slide out and fall and this is just poor posturing that will increase your low back pain and so the third picture will show you the best way to sit up in the chair. Um, if you have chairs with arms, that also gives you um, something that you're able to push with as you stand. Doors, and this is one that we don't think about often, but it definitely can play a um, particular toll in falls or injuries or trips. Um, depending on what kind of lock you have, if you're standing there having to unlock several things, um, your threshold, is it safe, is everything in place and intact? The weight of the door, if you have a heavy door that you have to pull open and it's hard for you to pull, um, or if we have arthritis in our hands or things like that that makes it difficult, that can also throw our balance off and increase our fall risk. And how the door opens, if it's a smooth open opening or if you have to pull and tug on that. Or sliding doors and um, things like that can be difficult as well and throw your balance. Exercise to help strengthen and improve in your balance. Just daily, a daily regimen. Here's some exercises that you can practice. This is the heel toe. You put the heel of one foot directly in front of the toes of the other. Walk moving the back to front and you just kind of keep going as you're going ahead um, in that process and that will help adjust your balance. The single leg stance is another one. Uh, make sure you have a sturdy surface before starting this, maybe a kitchen counter or something like that. And you'll stand hip width apart and lift one foot and hold it for 30 seconds. Put that foot down and repeat the other. But make sure it's very important that you have a sturdy surface. The dynamic, the dynamic walking, uh, proper positioning, foot alignment, and a powerful push off along with a strong posture will keep you walking longer and stronger. And again, this is important that you wear good shoes that provide support to your feet. Chair exercises, doing chair stands, chair squats, and toe raises. Um, they seem simple, but they, they will help um, build that and strengthen you in your overall stamina as well. Interventions that can increase safety and reduce risk of falls. Meeting with your practitioner or your pharmacist is key. Um, review your plan of care. What your plan of care is, is what does your doctor with your diagnoses think is the best um, everyday, day-to-day -day life for you? What can you do to make everyday quality of life? Um, medications, nutrition, exercises, and life events. Um, this again, uh, one of the interventions is making sure we have an open communication with your practitioner, whether it's a nurse practitioner, your physician, um, pharmacists are really great in this factor as well. They're really good about talking about medications that interfere with one another or that could be putting you at um, a um, high fall risk as well and certain vitamins and supplements as well. Organizing your medications is a key point as well to make sure you're taking everything that you should be on a daily regimen as the doctor or uh, practitioner prescribed. Um, interventions that can increase safety and reduce your risk of falls. Therapy is something that's um, becoming more and more available in very um, different ways of life, especially with COVID. You have the option of um, coming in and doing 
in-home therapy, um, physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech. Um, there are some outpatient clinics as well that still are offering the therapy, um, and it's just more of a timed event. But they can help you organize and develop something for you personally and what your needs are. And so I would encourage you, if this is something that you're struggling with, to contact your provider and they can help set this up for you. What do I do in case I do have a fall? Number one, I would tell you, if you fall and you are injured and you are in pain, just stop right there. Um, that's a 911. And so I would encourage you, if you do not have a device that supports that feature, um, I would tell you all to look into getting something like that. And um, I'm sure the Senior Center can help you with that, as well as looking online, but you can wear a pendant, so if you're down and you can't get up and you're home alone, you push that pendant and it's a 911 call and they'll be there to help you. If you do not have significant injuries and can get up, first you'll roll onto your side, next you'll find a sturdy piece, hopefully you have some furniture that's going to be a sturdy piece close by and um, get to that piece of furniture and you'll crawl or roll over to that area. Then from a kneeling position, put your arms on the top of the stable surface and then put one foot flat on the floor and push up onto that surface. And without taking your first step, go ahead and sit in that chair and regroup and um, get yourself back together from that fall. How do we prevent falls? Number one, exercise regularly. Um, just adding this into your daily routine is very, very helpful. Just in the event, it will strengthen you and that way your balance and overall well-being um, is satisfied with that. Review your medications with your healthcare provider or pharmacist. Very, very important because sometimes we take medications and we're not sure what we're taking or the side effects of those medications. And so if we learn more about that, sometimes we can work together with that practitioner to avoid these falls. Have your vision and hearing check. Hearing is very important as well as vision. Some of us may have hard of hearing issues. We may have dizziness because of a disease process that we have. Uh, we may have, um, some of us will have um, increased earwax uh, buildup and that can also deter how we are getting around and walking around and um, it can make us stumble at times. So I would encourage vision and hearing checks routinely. Um, correct your common home safety hazards. These are things that are very important. Those rugs, those cords, shoes, making sure your stairs are safe. Um, do we need to decrease from a two-story home to a one-level living home? Um, the older that we get in the aging process. Um, are the steps going into our front door safe? Um, do I need a ramp? Is it easier for me to go up the ramp than the steps? Just think, um, taking all of these things into consideration um, to be as safe as possible. Um, some of the um, high risk diagnoses that we think about um, are dementia. You know, when we have dementia and our cognition's changing and we become forgetful, um, we may forget that the cord you know, um, is in the way or that the rug is unsafe and so that becomes a problem. Incontinence is a huge one. Um, when we're in our um, room at night, we wake up, we need to go to the restroom and um, we don't want to be incontinent in our bed so we go to the restroom and then we fall because we're trying to get there in such a hurry. We may not take our assistive device that we have or we don't have our flashlight with us and we're unsure how to get to the restroom. Um, bone degeneration. Those of us that may have deteriorating disc and things in our back, um, as the aging process occurs, then that becomes weaker and weaker. Um, neurological changes, seizures, Parkinson's disease. With Parkinson's you have tremors. You have them in your upper extremities and sometimes you have them in your lower extremities. Sometimes they tend to um, lead to needing assistive devices and at times we want to be independent and don't want to always use our assistive devices and at times that will put us at an increased risk to fall. Um, diabetes is a very common one because if our diabetes is uncontrolled, um, we typically have more neuropathy in our feet um, and that's the sensitive part of our being when we're trying to walk and making sure that we have um, good, safe walking patterns. And so making sure that we're trying to control our diabetes with, a, with our diet that our physicians have recommended as well as 
the medications that we have on board. Arthritis. Arthritis is another situation depending on how significant and severe our um, arthritis is as we age can also play a toll in our risk factors um, depending upon how weak, how unsteady, um, the pain, the pain that you're going through. And so just making sure that all these things are managed. So developing a great relationship with your practitioner is very important and staying in tune to your routine visits. So um, you can um, talk with them and make sure that everything you have on board and everything you're doing is satisfactory. So, I just want to say thank you for the time that you've allowed me to come out and share with you. And I hope that you all have a great rest of your day. And if you have any questions, please don't um, hesitate to reach out to the Senior Center and they can have my um, information and I can reach back out to you and answer any questions that you have.